Hello, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step on what a cybersecurity auditor does on a daily basis. I'm going to go over what cybersecurity certifications, GRC skills you need to become a cybersecurity auditor. Stay to the end of the video and I'll go step-by-step -step on a daily task would be like as an auditor. If you're new to my channel, I'm Nicole, and I currently work in governance, risk, and compliance within cybersecurity, and this video is just based on my experience within the field. If you're interested, I do have a waitlist for a GRC apprentice program below where I walk you through step-by-step -step on how to build a cybersecurity program, which is how it's done in the real world. This is going to give you a comprehensive understanding of the full picture, and developing those strategic skills that last throughout time instead of just chasing tactic after tactic and having to relearn skills every like six to 12 months. So first off, what exactly is the purpose of a cybersecurity auditor and why is it important? Essentially, an auditor is the last line of defense, unlike a SOC analyst, which is the first line of defense. Almost every company needs to be in compliance with some rules and regulations. What a cybersecurity auditor does is they go in and they make sure that the cybersecurity aspect of the program is in compliance with those rules and regulations and identify gaps in their cybersecurity program and controls that they have in place. There are three main types of controls that you would be looking at as a cybersecurity auditor. And those are number one, technical controls, physical controls, and also administrative controls. And so those are the three things that you would be making sure is in compliance. If they're not in compliance, they can get fined millions and millions of dollars. This is a position that number one, can't really be outsourced, is in demand in almost every city. There are a lot of different names for a cybersecurity auditor. Some other names that this can go by is a control assessor, an IT auditor, uh, a cybersecurity analyst with a focus on governance, risk, and compliance. You really have to read those job descriptions. What exactly do they do on a day-to-day -day basis to make sure that those controls are put into place and are actually working? So basically, a cybersecurity auditor day can be broken into three different phases. The first phase is planning, the second phase is field work, and the third phase is reporting. So these jobs are a lot of reading, writing, and documenting. In the planning phase, you will get an assignment of a audit that you need to do for a specific system within the organization. And from there, you have to figure out what exactly the scope of the audit is going to be. Are you going to do a full audit, meaning you check every single control that needs to be put in place? Or are you going to do a targeted assessment where you only check for certain specific things and see if that they're in compliance with those certain controls. So maybe you only want to do technical controls for authentication, in which case then you would only check those. Or maybe you only want to do administrative controls so you go through all of their policies and see if there's any gaps in those policies that could potentially get them fined. Or maybe you want to make sure that the physical controls are put into place and working so you do a walkthrough and you make sure that the security guards aren't falling asleep on the job if you need those at your job. And so when you get an assignment, you're going to want to number one, figure out the scope. Number two, you're gonna really want to figure out what exactly the system is. So once you figure out what exactly your scope is for this audit, then the second part, you're going to do field work. And this is when you're going to set up walkthrough meetings with the managers for the system. You're going to need to know like the data flows, how people use the system and how many users are there. Depending on if this is a full assessment, then you're also going to want to go through their policies and make sure that their policies are being in place and being enforced. If you look at PCI DSS, there's actually step-by-step step on what you would do. Are you to interview them? Are you actually going to test the control? Are you going to just look through the policy? There are different controls for different industries. So there is SOC 2, there's HIPAA, there's NIST 853, NIST 800-171. But depending on the industry, you'll have different things that you want to follow. And I'll go more over at that on and show you how that works at the end of the video. After this goes into the third part, which is reporting. And the reporting part is where you are going to write up a report with all of the findings that you have. What this looks like is different based on the industry, but 
maybe you also give hints for the remediation that can be put into place so then they can be compliant with that finding. And then once you have finished that, then you move on to the next project. And so that's essentially what an auditor does. So for becoming an auditor within governance, risk and compliance, cybersecurity jobs, what exactly technical knowledge and foundational knowledge do you need to know? So this role usually is not for beginners. While it is maybe the best first governance, risk and compliance job, if you have no degrees, certifications, no experience, it's not really a great role to start with because number one, it's a huge risk to hire someone without any qualifications whatsoever or experience or any of that. So having some IT experience or cybersecurity experience, such as a, a SOC analyst or help desk or something like that does 100% help you here because it reduces the risk. Also having a degree also reduces risk. Large corporations really like degrees, certifications, and experience. And so you may be like, oh, I could easily do this. Big corporations are extremely risk adverse, meaning they're not really going to take a chance on you. And where I work, for instance, the only new people entry level roles that they hire, the only people who get those entry level GRC roles that maybe work in, say, education and training for cybersecurity or phishing campaigns and things of that sort are people who have degrees and are part of the new grad program. So getting a degree in 2025 is definitely helpful and it's not a waste of time like a lot of people are telling you. This is in software development. Again, big corporations, extremely risk adverse and having a degree does show that they did do their due diligence when hiring you in case you do something terrible and mess up. They can point saying we did our due diligence and researched the background of this people and we're not just hiring people off the street to do these audits for us. So the best cybersecurity certifications for GRC to work as an IT auditor is 100% the ISACA CISA, C-I-S-A. You can look it up. That's by far the best certification. And a lot of large corporations where they're doing most of the hiring for these positions require you to have that certification. Why? Because it shows that they did their due diligence on hiring the right people for the role in case there is a breach, they're not going to be found as being negligent. As for the technical knowledge, you do need technical knowledge. If you look through, say, the PCI DSS guide, you're going to see that a lot of the acronyms in the, the control are technical controls. And so you're going to need to know exactly what to look for. That doesn't mean you need to be like a super wonder kid when it comes to IT control. And if you don't know, say I'm saying what it, SSH is, you could easily get that maybe confused with L and then there's like TLS and then there's many acronyms in the field, which can get super overwhelming. You need to be able to learn different environments really quickly. And so the technical knowledge, which most environments are, are made up of, are of you need to know the basics of networking, databases, storage and backup, identity access management, and the basics of applications. So most, not all environments are compromised of those being IT fundamentals. And I do have a video that goes deeper into the IT fundamentals that every GRC professional needs to know right here. If you're wanting to gain hands-on experience where I actually have you build out an entire cybersecurity program, how it's done in the real world, I do have a waitlist for a GRC apprentice program below that is eight weeks long. You will have a really good knowledge of how everything works together. Well, let's get into doing a step-by-step -step on how you could do a cybersecurity audit for a policy. So we're going to be using PCI DSS. I'll link this document below so you can look at it. And yeah, let's get started. All right, so as a daily task for a cybersecurity auditor or IT auditor with say the payment card industry, so you would be using the industry standard PCI DSS, which we can look at right here. Basically as an auditor, you are going to live by this document. This basically tells you exactly what you are supposed to do and the requirements and testing procedures for doing this. So as you can see, it goes into the requirements. It goes into the testing procedures, what you're actually going to do. 
For each new PCI DSS requirement, here's the extended implementation period. So they have a deadline before they need to reach this. And then there's also the guidance. So this is how they can meet the requirement. This describes the goal and benefit or threat to be avoided and why the requirements are there. This also is the definition and examples and all of that. And yeah, basically that's what you would do. Now for this example, what we're going to do is I'm gonna go back over to my FigJam board and we are going to do this control right here. What you can do is you can actually practice this on your own. And if you scroll down, there's basically going to be all of these control right here. You can actually just set up your own environment if you want to, and then you can practice auditing all of these. And then you can even make different types of videos on this. We're just going to do an easy one. And remember, there are three types of controls. There's administrative controls, technical controls, and physical controls. This is an administrative control. Documentation and policies is what you're going to look at. Here, we're going to do roles and responsibility for performing activities in requirement three or documented, assigned, and understood. And here, day-to-day -day responsibility for performing all of the activities are allocated personal and accountable for successful continuous operation of these requirements. And as you can see here, we have the testing procedures. So I'm gonna to have to examine their documentation to verify the descriptions of the rules and responsibilities performing activities in requirement three are documented and assigned. And I can also interview people with responsibility for performing these activities to verify that they are actually documented and understood. So if you go and interview someone and they have no idea what you're talking about, but yet they're on this documentation, here it does give you a clue. It says that it, you need a RACI matrix. And this is a method to document roles and responsibilities. And so what you would do if you had no idea what this was is you could definitely Google this. Here's a simplified RACI model. And so you would have the activity in the task or you would have the phase and then you would have the implement task management, conduct internal audit, develop incident response plan. It depends on what we're auditing here. And then you're going to want to make sure responsible, accountable, consulted and informed. And so you would look at their documentation. And so if you are reviewing this and say for who is responsible for implementing patch management, the matrix should appear as this right here. And if it's not, that would be a finding. So what is wrong with the assignments of the roles? Which roles are missing? And what could the impact of this be? And how would you correct this matrix? You aren't the person who's fixing it. And then you are going to report these back up to your manager and say that these are findings. And then from there, the people who work there are going to be the ones fixing that. And then you are just going to go back and then reassess these a few months later to make sure that they are now in compliance with the findings and they have a good security posture. That's a very easy summed up version of what you'll actually be doing as an auditor.